Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I have somebody on the show coming on in just a moment from the Bay Area, and he is chasing the affordable housing just like I am. His name is Franco Perez, and Franco grew up in a family with an unstable housing situation. He is on his mission to create affordable housing in Silicon Valley. That is quite a feat. But he discovered that in the Bay Area's mobile home parks, they offer an abundance of underused land and great growth potential. After years of dedication to his vision, Franco has established a devoted team of like-minded individuals who believe their positive impact equals success. Inspired to reimagine mobile homes and expand affordable housing opportunities across the Bay Area, Franco's talented team strives to unlock the pathway to home ownership and help families establish financial security where it might otherwise seem impossible, especially in the time of the pandemic. Beyond his drive to develop cost-effective housing, Franco also enjoys videography, showcasing some of his favorite local restaurants and small world businesses, and promoting San Jose's unique culture to the world. Welcome, Franco. Hi, I'm Rebecca Hidalgo Reigns, and you're listening to Grateful Heart. I started this show to help educate my clients on the real estate market, and it's evolved into so much more. I've found that I love talking to people and I love learning new things. While our expertise is still on the health of the housing market, we want to focus on the health and the well-being of our listeners as well. More specifically, where we reside in our hearts, in our minds, and in our homes. The biggest purchase in our life just isn't a house. It's where we raise our children, start a new business, pray for our loved ones, and follow our dreams. It's even where we listen to our favorite podcast. When we are successful at home, everything else just falls into place, and we are so grateful for that. Home is where the grateful heart is. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, guys. I'm your host, Rebecca Hidalgo Reigns with Grateful Heart TV. And not in studio, on Zoom today, coming from California, I have the one, the only, Franco Perez. Welcome to the show today. Thank you for joining us. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, I have been hearing about you for a hot second now, and what I really love about everything that I've learned is you and I are actually on parallel paths right now. I don't know that you know much about me yet, but affordable housing is my personal passion, and apparently it's also yours. It sure is. <laughs> so what I want to know is, and I heard a little bit of your story, but I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Why are you so passionate about affordable housing in 2023 out there in the Bay Area in California? What's going on out there? What led up to you, you know, getting behind this? And actually, I saw your video. We're going to play it if we haven't already. The one where you're in Washington, literally on the lawn with one of your mobile homes, um, talking about affordable housing and trying to get some help from the government. I love it. Let's hear it. (laughs) So, yeah, I guess what led up to it, I guess a a small, long story short, a big part of my life has kind of been through a lot of struggle with housing. Um, Had immigrant parents that moved here. My parents split up in an unfortunate situation. Um, At around 17, 18, I had to drop out of school, start working and even working full time and with my single mom and younger sister, Mm -hmm. at the end of every month, we were struggling to pay rent and make ends meet and that sort of thing. And I remember hating the system, hating why is it this way? Why is it that the poor or middle class get to have to rent and and only the wealthy can afford real estate? Right. And and, uh, long story short, I got into uh, doing real estate as a real estate agent for a short amount of time did pretty well at that but they ended up hating real estate because i (laughs) it was just that i was helping the wealthiest people i could help get the most expensive homes that they could get and i had to turn away the people that were in my shoes back then so let's time out hey you don't make enough let's talk let's just talk about where you are because i'm very familiar with the bay area i grew up there myself and you literally live in one of the most expensive places in the entire country. So rewind to 17-year-old Franco, I could see how a divorced mom with a couple of kids could be struggling to make rent over there, right? So that's like legitimate, yeah. and that's just the average Joe. That That's what I've deemed everybody during COVID. I too lost a lot of clients, or not able to help the clients I wanted to help because 
they're just basically got priced out of even being able to afford a home here in Arizona, which is a lot cheaper than where you live in the Bay Area. So I, I definitely, everything you're, you're saying is completely resonates. It resonated when you were 17 and no offense, I'm sure you're not you know, that young little bird anymore. So you know, it's probably 20 years or so fast forward. And the problem is not just there, but it's gotten bigger. It's harder, is it not? It's so true. And, and and that's exactly the point is that unfortunately, so many people are so priced out of this area. And mm-hmm. it's very unfortunate. If we look at the landscape of it in our area, you're either renting rent from two bedroom apartments about thirty five hundred dollars a month here. Isn't and then an average single family home is about one point five million dollars. And how do you ever dream of owning something one day if the 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 gap in between is that far different? Right. Right. And that's why that's why I'm so passionate about this and driven about this is because hey, only the the rich and the wealthy are able to benefit with home ownership, which is the benefits are the equity gain, the building of their net worth, the leveraging of a loan to be able to 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 help their financial um, stability. Well, nobody and gets wealthy also the renting. Tax benefits as well. Oh, of course, the taxes alone, but nobody gets wealthy renting, right, Franco? So, you know, you, in order to acquire or build any equity, you got to start somewhere. So, what I'm really curious about with you, okay, so 17 year old Franco drops out of school, and then how did you get to where you are today? Yeah, so. Um, once I was kind of making an okay amount of money being mm-hmm. a real estate agent, I really drew my life to try to find out how can I help those people that can barely afford real estate but want to get ahead, right? right? And I, I accidentally stumbled across mobile home parks and came to realize there's so many mobile home parks across the country. And what I used to think was that mobile homes were really just – you know what the media portrays it's like trailer trash bad mm-hmm. quality homes bad quality people and that's what a lot of people believe but when you actually go into these communities you'll come to find there's amazing people in these communities the homes and the communities aren't aren't what we think and it's a perfect place where people are starting their wealth building journey and all of the myths that we think about mobile homes are actually false well, um, they've come and- a long way they definitely have come a long way, I think, over the last even decade. Um, I was out in San Diego a few months back, and I went to Tiny Home Fest, which is along the same genre of mobile homes. And it is amazing to me how much interest there is in not just, of course, always affordable housing, but in maybe living in a, something that had been prefab, you know, coming from a factory instead of having to be stick built, which is more expensive. So I'm curious, have you ever worked with anybody from the tiny home um, business or do you just only sell mobile homes? So a lot of the, we get a lot of interest in a lot of clients that get around tiny homes. I have built a few, like around seven to 10 of those in the past, but it hasn't always been the best fit. It's not always as practical in a lot of these metro areas. Oh, makes sense. Um, but. But however, it's been very popular because of the media and because of the, yeah. the movement on TV, right? Right. And, and we get to utilize that. Um, but the builders that build these are actually the same builders that kind of are a, a lot of the same builders that are building these mobile homes as well. That's and, what I noticed. And that's yeah. really, yeah. So um, with that being said, like the construction element of how they've come along. Mm-hmm. One of the big problems that we're really facing with affordable housing is that construction's getting way worse. It's getting more expensive, materials oh, getting expensive, and the labor's getting it. expensive. And we have to kind of see mm-hmm. this as a problem that's gonna continue to get worse. And if we think about it as an analogy of cars, with cars, it was really only built and accessible for the rich and wealthy. And it was only until we built them in a factory on an assembly line that we were able to make this accessible for everybody. Right Now, that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish with mobile homes as well. Mm-hmm. Th- these, house- these homes are built on an assembly line in a very streamlined fashion by, and we're able to save on material costs and we're able to optimize the labor costs and make sure that everything's built at a high level of quality and pumping out really good quality homes 
at a fraction of what a single family home would be built today. So let's, and that's a huge element why this is so affordable. Let's talk real quick. As you say that, it pops into my head, Franco. When you say so much savings and so much more affordable, you just finished telling the audience that a million and a half, which is mind boggling, is the standard home, the average home. So a million and a half at today's interest rate at 7% or so is probably, I don't know, eight, $9,000 a month to live in a house, which is really hard. So what if somebody was willing and open-minded to a factory built home that literally gets affixed to the land? I'm assuming that's what you're doing. You're doing probably FHA mortgages, right? And if you're doing that, then it has the same fee simple title entitlement that a regular stick belt house, but at what savings could somebody expect? And, and what are the, some of the myths? Because, you know, of course, most people, I think they think about, like you mentioned, trailer trash, but it's not like that anymore. So let's talk about that. Yeah, so so a ton in that question, but the, yeah, just to, just to portray the, these prices and that sort of thing is always different in different areas. We don't just work in the Bay, but I'm going to use uh, San Jose as an example, like you mentioned. Yeah. 1.5 million is the average real piece of single family home. And then 3,500 is like a two bedroom apartment that's out for rent, right? Right. And, and in order to acquire a $1.5 million home, let's say someone puts 10% down, that's $150,000 mm-hmm. that they'd have to put down. And like you said, an eight dollars $9,000 monthly payment. Right now, in our area, an average mobile home is about three hundred fifty thousand dollars, mm-hmm. and they, if they put ten percent down, that's only thirty five thousand dollars. Right, a lot easier now, to save up. For that's that. more attainable, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so, being in a mobile park in itself, what their monthly uh, would look like is they have about a thousand dollars, which is on the lot rent itself, mm-hmm. and they'll have about twenty seven to twenty nine hundred dollars on the mortgage. So with those added up, you're looking at about uh, $3,800 or about, let's call it $4,000, which is just a little bit more than what they would be paying for rent. On an apartment. But it's a hybrid model and it's a stepping stone to get them out of that rental mm-hmm. rat race and start getting a lot of the benefits of home ownership so that they can just help them get become more financially stable, right? And with that, uh, you also asked about the myths is, and, and and that sort of thing. We have a lot of uh, bad information that these mobile homes are always depreciate in value, that they're bad quality and that the communities are of bad quality and that the people in there are of bad quality as well. But it's just like with apartment, if we think about apartments, there are bad apartments that you don't want your kids going around, but there's also luxury apartments that are luxurious. And mm-hmm. there's that same spectrum with mobile homes. That Yes, there are bad trailer park mobile homes that make us look bad, but there's also right. beautiful re- resort-like mobile home communities where kids are playing around. You have swimming pools, spas, gyms, and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And not only that, everyone in these mobile home parks are are owners of their own mobile homes. So they're very invested, financially invested in their homes. So they really take care of their units Mm -hmm. and they get to know their neighbors. And you see that sense of community in these parks as well. You know, I love all of that. And one thing I wanna add to that sentiment is, I was actually just in a conversation yesterday with a client of mine, and she's looking at spending about 400,000 here in Phoenix for cash for a home for her son, because her son can't buy one without her help. And and he's lucky, he's got a mom who's affluent enough that she can do that, right? And she said to me, and and this is kind of in that whole line of genre, like there's so many people out there that believe the market's gonna crash still. You know, just because the media, you and I both know, the media is always putting out scary headlines, whether there's fact or not behind the headlines is a whole different story. And so she said to me yesterday, she goes, Rebecca, I'm afraid that the house isn't gonna be worth it if I spend top dollar today and next year it'll drop in value. Kind of along the lines of the whole mobile home, right? And I said to her, I go, you know what, Kathy? But in one year, if the home is the same value, say it doesn't appreciate at like the 25% it did last year or the year before, but maybe just 4% or maybe 0%, what is the benefit of owning that house anyways? And kind of in, in line with everything that you just said, but the biggest thing, she looks at me, she goes, well, he's not paying somebody else's mortgage. And I'm like, yeah, 
Exactly. He's not paying somebody else's mortgage. He's paying down his own. So it's like a forced savings. His balance is coming down. So even if it never appreciates, at least he's whittling down his balance and he's getting tax benefits, right? So quit worrying about what it's going to be worth next year because, you know, we've had these unicorn years in the last couple of years of value appreciation for everything real estate related, land, mobiles, homes. I'm sure the homes you're selling today for 350, probably pre-COVID, were maybe 300 or less, you know? I mean, that's just the reality of what's happened with our economy over the last few years. And I personally believe, like you, that home ownership is also great for people just with their own, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a word in Spanish I wanna say. It just has to do with your own pride, sense of ownership, the communities, like you just said, if they own it versus renting it, they're taking better care of it. And you know they care about their neighbors. And I think that is so beautiful that you're bringing that to the Bay Area that really, really needs it. So if somebody was looking for you in the Bay Area, explain to me your business model, Franco. Do you own different mobile home parks? Do you own the builder that, you know, are you participating with the builder to build these homes? Um, you know, what could they expect for help from you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, if if I may, I, I'd love to kind of add to what you said. Yeah, and, of course. And I think a lot of what what's changed me as well going through all of this is there's not just the wealth gap, but there's also an information and education yeah. gap, and that's Absolutely. what I that's what I've learned. You know, when I was poor and when I was barely making it, a lot of these values that you mentioned of, you know, what's the difference between owning and renting and that sort of thing. We aren't taught that in school. We aren't mm -hmm. taught that with our circle of friends. Mm -mm. But, you know, as soon as you kind of have uh, other wealthy groups or wealthy friends, it's such common sense and their values are very different. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm passionate about our YouTube channel. And we do a lot of educational stuff around there is because we want to bring that education to everyone out there that wants to get ahead, that wants that opportunity to get ahead. Because like you said, even if it, the home doesn't appreciate, at least your monthly is going towards something that you own. Yeah. Right. And it's a huge difference and money doesn't just go out one way which is what i used to think before like hey i could be spending four thousand dollars a month on rent and mm -hmm. but why would i spend four thousand dollars a month on this if it's the same amount of difference but the truth is we don't look at the money coming back when we sell it later down the line right. and that's one of the big things that unfortunately aren't really Ed, we aren't really educated about that style of how money works mm -hmm. in the regular school and, and with, you know, when it comes to being in, in the working class. Now, um, and uh, yeah, but I, I just wanted to say that no, because I'm I felt I had a very... <laughs> So, I, I've um, come from then, humble beginnings too, Franco, and I think those of us who are you know passionate about this is because we've come from humble beginnings, you know, and you know what it took to get to where you are today, and you want to help others. I love all the education that you're talking about because I am. Why do you think I do my podcast? Because I'm always looking to educate and give back. So that said, I want to take a super quick commercial break because I could sit here talking to you for hours and I need to make sure my sponsors get a little love. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to come right and I want to talk about the education you're doing, okay? If you're looking for a mortgage, you need a personalized plan, not a click button get mortgage option. My team and I have saved families thousands by proactively planning their home purchase or a refinance. Buying a home is a huge decision and it deserves a strategic approach. My team and I provide a comprehensive mortgage plan, including a complete credit analysis outlining the steps needed to improve your credit score and help you qualify for the best rates and terms in the market. Visit us at tkteam.us today. We'll ensure you get the best guidance so you can make the best decisions. The TK Team, moving you forward. Hi, I'm Rebecca Hidalgo Reigns with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, and I've been selling homes here in the Valley for over a quarter of a century. I want to say that experience truly matters. So when you're looking for a realtor to help you either buy or sell your biggest purchase of your life, I hope you'll consider using me. My experience doesn't matter near as much as my clients. So I do dare you to Google me and I promise you'll see nothing but fantastic reviews because I really do truly care to help navigate you and your family to the very best experience you'll ever have with buying a home. Have you been thinking about buying a new house or refinancing your existing mortgage? Interest rates are still around historically low levels. 
Why pay a higher rate when you don't have to? Call Joe Smith, me, at Epic Mortgage LLC, 602-741-4121 for a free mortgage quote or pre-qualification. Epic Mortgage LLC is a locally owned, independent mortgage brokerage that provides low-cost options for its customers. Independently owned means low overhead, so you get the best rates, fees, and service. Keep more of your money. Brokers are better. Realtor recommended for over 20 years. Contact me, Joe Smith, at Epic Mortgage today, 602-741-4121. Whether purchasing a home or refinancing, we know you have choices when it comes to choosing a title company. Navi Title Agency is the leading source for all title, escrow, and marketing needs. With access to the largest title insurance underwriter, Navi Title facilitates successful closings and protects clients from fraud, creating solutions that save time and money for everyone. Ask your realtor or loan officer today about using Navi Title on your next real estate transaction. Navi Title Agency is locally owned and operated in the state of Arizona. Who are the people that we serve? If you see that home, that gray home that we're looking at, that was built in a factory. Oh yeah. yeah. Was my hair like that the whole speech? No. <laughs> What's up guys? We just had such an amazing event and I am so grateful for kind of this whole experience. Check out this beautiful manufactured home that we put right on the National Mall with the beautiful Capitol building in the background. I think one of the most important things that I want people to know is that everyone here has been doing a great job of talking about the homes, but I often think we forget to talk about the people that we're serving. These homes that we're building are not for the rich and the wealthy. You know, I grew up with a single mom that had to struggle with rent. I dropped out of school just to help her pay for rent every month, just to make ends meet. And I know that today there are people out there that are in the shoes that I was in, struggling to pay rent with fears of not knowing if they're gonna make ends meet at the end of every single month. There's teachers, there's waiters, there's construction workers out there that have this stress that's, that they shouldn't have and they're great people. And these people feel that the American dream of home ownership is not possible because guess what? It's so difficult for people to be able to get out of this rent cycle into home ownership. Unfortunately, with the way things are going, the cost of material is going up. The cost of construction is going up. It's getting harder and harder to get skilled labor. And that dream of home ownership is getting far and far and harder to attain. So we need more innovative, disruptive ways to build quality homes for the working class. So just like in the past where these cars were really only meant for the rich and the wealthy. It was only until we started building these in a factory on an assembly line where we were able to get cars available to everybody. And that right here, this beautiful home right here is a factory built home that was built in a factory on an assembly line. And we're doing this continuously and continuously. And there's no better place in our country to showcase what we're doing other than putting it right here on the National Mall of the United States of America. This is a home that we've continuously built and I've personally seen it help so many families get their first piece of home ownership here. And these homes today are helping the middle class pursue that dream of home ownership. These are the most affordable and most eco-friendly quality built homes that we are building in our country. We have to protect equal opportunity to accessible ownership for financial security, for financial freedom, for these hardworking families. We have to protect the way these homes are being built in the factories. We have to protect the manufactured home communities, the mobile home communities, and continue to create equal opportunity for financial freedom like this. And this is something our country should be fighting to protect. It is our duty and this is why we wake up every single morning to work hard on what we're doing. It's to protect equal opportunity and financial freedom for the working class, for the people that really need this and the people that are low income and feel like the dream of home ownership isn't attainable. We have to keep that possible and it's so important to me. So thanks for watching, take care, bye. All right, guys, we just get back from commercial break and we just checked out Franco's really cool video where he's in Washington 
talking about everything that we're talking about, but in Washington, on the lawn. I've never even been on the lawn. Tell me about it, Franco. How was it? It, it was really amazing and surreal. It, it was such an uh, impactful moment of mine. I, I think, you know, with that video, it really kind of portrays what we're trying to accomplish. And uh, something like we mentioned that I'm very passionate about, it's the affordable housing element. And it's not just what I hate is that there's a lot of fluff and what I find as fake affordable housing, in my opinion, <laughs> where it's just like reduced rent or, right. and that sort of thing. But you no, know, I think what I dislike about what happens is we, we think that a lot of these things that are helping people aren't always really giving the benefit mm -hmm. that we want it to help, right? right? When people come out of these reduced rent affordable housing, then what? As soon as they're out of that, they're they haven't not, learned you know, the tools. They don't a lot of the, exactly. Now, and that's why I'm so passionate about the ownership element of this. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what we spoke about in Washington, D.C. We spoke about, hey, these are teachers. These are working class citizens mm -hmm. that are getting that level of financial security that they deserve. Right. And that they should have um, that they should have. And this is why mobile homes are so important. And, you know, unfortunately, there are entities that do believe that manufactured housing is is a bad thing or that believe that mobile home parks are a bad thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I'm here speaking at D.C. And, and really advocating for how this is helping society, how it's helping working class people be able to start their wealth building journey mm -hmm. and to be able to showcase a home there on the National Mall of Washington. That was really was, cool, I bet. It was it's it, it's giving me goosebumps talking about it. <laughs> I love it. Well, I even got a little bit of goosebumps going on. So um, if somebody wanted your help, they're in the Bay Area and it sounds like, you know, you can help them in multiple places. Would you feel would you say that your biggest help you give people is the education? And if so, what does that look like? Like, do you do seminars? I know you said YouTube and I have all your links. I'm going to post all of them and I'm actually going to swipe through and show our audience for those that are watching um, instead of just listening so that they can see some of the pages you're, you've got out there. I mean, you've got a ton of content out there, Franco, and I really applaud you for everything that you're putting out there for people to learn from. Yeah. So, I mean, with us, and, and I deeply mean this, for us, it's really just about educating and, and allowing an opportunity for people to really understand this. Mm -hmm. uh, but you asked earlier kind of how our business works. Yeah. It really, we try to be anything and everything around mobile homes. We don't mm -hmm. just do this in the Bay Area. Now we have agents in LA, San Diego, and we're looking to expand to actually to Arizona, Nevada, and ah. that sort of thing as well. Okay. But whether it's through us or whomever, mm -hmm. you know, our our whole company motto is to try to help, you know, the working class people. And it's and it doesn't always have to be through us. If you learn something off, off of our YouTube mm -hmm. and it enables you to be able to start owning in a metro city that this works for you, that alone makes me feel fulfilled mm -hmm. that this has been able to help you out. Right. And and that's kind of what we do is we are our, our business. We help people transact and get out of that rental rat race and into mobile homes. And then also we help those people that live in mobile home parks. They might own a mobile home park already. And then we help them get out of that and into a, a, a traditional regular home real estate as well. Exactly. So the third <clears throat> element of what we do, too, is also somebody that already lives in a very old 1970s home will help them realize like, hey, you might have a single wide now that's 700 square foot, but you're on a lot that can that can have a home that's 2,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. We help them replace that old one with a new one, raise the value of their current home, just like what real estate developers do, right? but at a smaller scale, and then allow for them to raise the value of their mobile home and wherever they're at as well. Well, I love the niche that you're filling, Mark uh, Franco, because at the end of the day, there's only so many options, right, for people to live in where they can maybe afford it. So question I have for you, when you just gave that, that example of the 700 square foot to 2,000 square foot, um, so essentially, you guys are a real estate group and you help people navigate buying, selling, and, and I'm assuming you have particular builders you like for mobile homes that you have relationships with already and probably lenders as well. So if they reach out to you, you can help them 
you know, direct them to the financing, direct them to the proper maybe floor plan or builder for, for them. Um, and I just want to make sure I'm, I'm understanding correctly what kind of help they can get from you. And then before you finish, I want to know what is your favorite financing opportunity for somebody who's never owned before? What is the easiest way for them to come in with the least amount of money to, you know, to give an affordable example? Yeah, yeah. So the the truth of it is, is that there there hasn't always been a lot of financing opportunities options for mobile homes inside right. communities. We've done a lot of lobbying for backing and that sort of thing as well. But we do have our own loan co- loan entity and loan company that helps with that. Oh, good. But typically you'll see about a 10% down and we don't, um, we don't have, unfortunately there's not FHA, but the cool thing about it is you can buy a mobile home with a loan and then after you sell your mobile home, you then have access to being a first time home buyer as well. Okay. So that being said, you have 10% down and then we have 25 year mortgages. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it would be called a chattel loan, which is it they do a loan structure, which mm-hmm. allows for you to do that mortgage in a mobile home park. Ah, so that makes sense because it is challenging sometimes for financing. I know here in Arizona, we'll, I'll see um, FHA transactions on mobile homes typically more rural, not necessarily in a park. And I think the difference is when you're renting the slip. Am I understanding that correct? Because I want to make sure I don't give somebody the wrong advice. Okay, so if you own some land and get a mobile home, that's a different animal than buying a mobile home and renting the slip. Can you explain that a little bit? I'm sure you tell people all the time. Yeah, so so a lot of a lot of people will look into saying like, I don't want to buy a mobile home because I don't want to pay that space rent. And I know that that's a very common, uh, that's a very uh, understandable thing to understand, to to be afraid of or to steer away from. Mm-hmm. However, it's all about where you're coming from and what's your current situation. If the alternative is renting at $4,000 a month, then, hey, it might be okay or a little bit better to spend that $1,000 a month mm-hmm. on the space rent and and then have you know how do i say this instead of having your whole amount going towards the landlord paying their mortgage sure yes you are still paying a third of your payment to the mobile home park but two-thirds of that payment is working for you right and to your benefit right right? which allows for it to keep that home also affordable and it also allows for you to be able to attain something at a lower cost as well and 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 we talked about a lot about you know, everyone in these communities owning this. And the beautiful thing that I love about these mobile home parks is that, you know, a buyer, a family that's coming in, they're not competing with investors or hedge funds that want to buy these to rent these out. Mm -hmm. Everyone that lives in there has to have that as their primary residence. So you're not competing with a multi-unit investor to purchase these, which drive the prices up. And when you sell your home, it actually goes to a family that would really essentially need this. Got it, got it, got it. Makes total sense. Well, what I wanna do real quick, you can see my screen. Um, I love all of your all of your story, but here is a link, and this is your Linktree link that has a link for everything. Tell me a little bit um, about the video that I'm looking at here on your Linktree, and then you had a Forbes article, you were on CBN, like, dude, you're everywhere, I love it. And then there's your um, video we just saw. You're on LinkedIn, so people can find you there. Um, your Facebook page, what, where, but YouTube is where you're really at. So I'm assuming your YouTube is on this link as well. Um, check out our latest yeah. food video. Okay. Now let's talk food. Really? Latest food video. We're talking <laughs> about mobile homes. Why do you have food on your link tree? Oh man. And that's kind of like my side hobby. Uh, I'll like be honest. Eat? When I was a kid, my actual <laughs> dream. My actual dream, my actual dream as a kid was to be a videographer and make movies and Aww. and do a ton of video stuff, and and um, and to me, I love video, uh, and, but it just never worked out for me to go that path. But now it's like I love supporting small businesses, ah. small restaurants, mom and pop restaurants, mm-hmm. and being a foodie, 
way I love food. So, um, yeah. So yeah. if somebody gets but, uh, finds and, you and goes onto your link tree, if they scroll all the way down to the bottom, they get to see all your favorite foods. It sounds like they're in the Bay Area, which I need to check out because I'm going to be up there pretty soon. Um, so where can people find you, Franco? You mentioned your YouTube. What's your channel um, address or your handle for that? Yeah, that, that link that has everything, which is our YouTube, our, all our um company stuff is www.franco.tv mm-hmm. there you can see like how these homes are being built you can see the beauty of what the communities look, look like what the homes actually look like you have to see it in, visually too i know we're talking a lot about it yeah but these are 12 high ceilings quartz countertops stainless steel appliances we make them as modern and contemporary as can be so are you actually um, the builder? Or you can just go- Franco, are you actually the builder of these or are you the realtor of these? Which one are you doing both hats? So, so we both. Okay. So we do a lot of the design work. We do okay. all of the logistics of the building. Um, and we really push the limits of how these can be built. Awesome. So what's the name of the building entity versus, you know, Franco, your entity? Or is it all the same? It's, it's, it would be all under the same company, okay. which is Franco Mobile Home. I love it. I love it. Like I, 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 your humble beginnings are very awe-inspiring as far as you've come, especially being on the Washington DC lawn, talking about your company and what you're doing to help people. I love and applaud you for all things. We truly are on parallel paths right now, Franco. And I look forward to seeing what you do in the future. We just have a few minutes left. Before we finish this interview, what are some of the last thoughts that you would like to make sure anybody who's watching um, takes away from today? Um, I'd say, it's a tough one. I, I'd say my, my favorite thought is to find something where you can really create an impact for people. I, I think there's a lot of stuff out there that make people excited about making X amount a month and that sort of thing. but. For me, that really didn't drive me. And when I, I still tear up today when I see a family that felt like they could have never owned something yeah. in their life. And Makes when I see them too. with tears of joy mm-hmm. of finally owning something, that is what drives me to wake up every single morning mm-hmm. and work late nights to, to make that happen again for another family and another. And that's what got me to be as resourceful as I am today. And, and I think if people uh, really chase and pursuit that and helping people, it, it can really help you grow by so much. You get what you give. It was my original theme song for my podcast. And it's so true. The more you give, absolutely, the more you get. And it looks like you have a very full life, Franco. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to be watching you, dude. I can't wait to see what else you do next. And I'm definitely a fan. Thank you again for your time. Thanks for having me. And- And I love what you're doing. Thank you, Franco. Enjoy your day. Take care. Bye-bye. Wow, that was fun, was it not? I can't wait to actually go meet him in person. He's going to feed me. That is so cool. So I hope you enjoyed Franco Perez. Check him out at franco.tv or Franco Mobile Homes. He's got something going on that I don't see much of here in Arizona. But if he is going to do what I think he's going to do, he will be spreading beyond California before we all know it. Go check them out. What a great show. And thank you for joining us on our mutual journey to becoming unharmable and successful in all of our experiences while we're here in this school of life. We hope you enjoyed it. If you watched us on YouTube, please like and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Likewise, if you're catching us on one of our podcast platforms, be sure to follow us so you never miss out on another one of our shows again. Remember that if you ever have a question about real estate or any of the other topics we cover, Check us out on the web, www.gratefulheart.tv, for all of our links to connect with us. I'm on vacation every single day because I love my occupation. I'm on vacation every single day, every single day.